Tá de... Today, we're going to unbox the FNERSI DPS 150 CNC DC power supply. Let's start by unboxing. First, we have the instruction manual and the certificate of conformity. The main power supply unit is fairly compact size. It supports 0 to 30 volts and up to 5 amperes current. First, let's switch to code mode and check out the accessories. We have positive and negative probes, a micro USB charging cable, five buttons on the front panel, a carbon fiber sticker here, an adjustment knob, a dynamic indicator light, an output start button, a micro USB port on the back for computer connection, 3D machine communication support, a PDDC toggle switch corresponding to either PD or the DC port. There's also some printed text on the back. The device can tilt from zero to 90 degrees, so you can position it on your desk for optimal display. The screen is very clear and intuitive. Now, let's plug it into a power bank using the PD connection. The operation interface appears, and by pressing and holding the home button, we can adjust various parameters. You can modify the power settings, and system settings support both Chinese and English. It currently uses an industrial-style interface, which I personally prefer. Below, you'll find options for brightness, volume, and metering switch adjustments, along with the version number. By pressing M on the main interface, you can quickly switch between six shortcut groups. Hold down the confirmation button to bring up the output waveform display, which shows the current output. Let's demonstrate using a small light bulb. We've set it to three volts and one amp. After pressing the output button, the bulb lights up, drawing 0.278 amps. We can adjust the output voltage dynamically, dimming or brightening the bulb. Press the button again to stop the output. The circular light around the output button adds a nice touch. You can also use a 100 watt fast charging adapter. When plugged in, it provides 20 volts at 5 amps, exactly 100 watts. Let's set it to 20 volts and adjust the current to 5 amps. Even under full load, the unit handles it well. Now, let's short circuit the output to test its protection. No issues. The short circuit protection kicks in, which is impressive. Let's try something more exciting. What happens if we reverse a capacitor? We'll connect the negative to the positive terminal and the positive to the negative. Everyone, hold your phone steady. This could get intense. When I turn it on, bam, there's a spark. That was quite a show. Now let's try a bigger capacitor. This one has an explosion proof port, so it's safer. I'm still nervous though. When I press the button, it only sprays a bit of water. No big explosion. The sound was quite small, and those who know understand what just happened. Let's test a smaller capacitor of 4.7 mm1. It jumped a little, but nothing like the first one. The second one was much quieter. After cleaning up, let's switch to DC mode and use the DC Ochi port to measure the maximum power. Currently, the input is 32 volts, so let's play around with 30 volts. The full power output is 150 watts. At 30 volts, the output runs smoothly, no issues. Let's short circuit again, still, still no problem. It's quite a reliable unit, managing 5.1 amps effectively. This power supply is excellent, not just for testing electronic components, but also for modules. For example, I have a laser head here. We'll adjust it to five volts and turn it on. The laser head can project up to 1,000 meters, which is very bright at night. Currently, it's running at two watts. You can also use the power supply to drive remote control modules. Or charge batteries like the 18650. Just make sure to set the voltage and current appropriately. This power supply can replace all your chargers. Now, let's connect the communication port to the computer and open the software. Once connected, all the operations are done on the computer. The software supports six shortcut groups and allows you to adjust voltage and current settings. You can also ignore voltage settings to test specific conditions. For example, if you set it to 1.6 volts, the light bulb will adjust in cycles. 
You can even start recording the voltage and current curves while charging a battery or testing loads. After recording, it can generate a data table that you can save to your desktop for further analysis. There's also a firmware upgrade option available via the computer. To summarize, the DPS-150 is compact yet powerful. You can pair it with a portable power bank for easy transport or place it on your desk at a convenient viewing angle. It provides 150 watts of power with short circuit protection and the aluminum alloys casing ensures efficient heat dissipation. That's it for today's video. If you're interested in getting one for yourself, check out the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.